<laughs> well, hello there. It's nearly Halloween. I am back in my favourite pumpkin foliage and I thought it would be lovely to have a bit of a pre-Halloween relax since this Halloween is not really a normal Halloween, is it? This is not going to be your usual going out, clubbing and having fun and going on adventures Halloween. For many people, this might be a proper Samhain with offerings for the dead and hanging around to see if anybody who is lost comes to pay you a visit and things like that or alternately you may be on Zoom <laughs> at a pseudo event dancing around like a lunatic in your bedroom. I plan to be doing a bit of both Halloween falling on a Saturday. Honestly I find quite inconvenient. I like to have the Samhain and the Halloween separately but there we go. So anyway what I wanted to do was to read you The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. I am sure I am not anywhere near the first person to read this in ASMR on here but uh, it's a lovely poem and I enjoy doing ASMR. It's fun but I wanted to just make a few Halloween sounds first because I have some things that I love that I want to show you. First of all, um, in one of my favourite candles, I made a video recently about Luna Wick candles who they spell cast the crystals, they bathe everything in the moonlight, they make these gorgeous witchy candles and their Halloween special ones are called Pumpkin Party and they have freeze-dried pumpkins in them. They're really cute. And this one, I have two, and the other one doesn't do this, but this one, the seeds actually rattle in a very satisfying, sort of rustly, spooky way. Sounds like scampering spiders. It's like, it's like the most gothic percussive instrument ever. I don't use a tambourine, I use a freeze-dried pumpkin. <laughs> so I have that one and then I just have to show you these two amazing, I imagine they're gourds, but basically I have been making a pumpkin patch in the corner of my room my mom went to the grocery store and I said, can you keep an eye out for a really small pumpkin for my pumpkin patch? And she came back with a whole box of these weird, creepy looking gourds. This one, it has these strange spikes on it and these weird witchy boils on its bottom. And I think it's the most fabulous thing I've ever seen. And it makes quite nice Now, apparently this gourd is not actually edible. It is real. It grew out of the ground, but it's not edible. I don't know whether that's because it's poisonous or because it tastes like crap. I don't know, but um, I mean, it's not really a surprise. This doesn't really look edible, does it? It looks like it's doing everything in its power to tell you it's poisonous. <laughs> and then the other one I have is similar, but possibly even more Halloween-y. I mean, look at the colours of this. It's literally the most Halloween coloured thing I've ever seen. If there is somewhere out there a dimension where nobody but goths live, this is probably what all the fruit look like. Um, and again, it makes, makes quite nice noises. I love the fact that this one still has its stem. I think they're so photogenic with stems. Um, and obviously the noise I always have to make in an ASMR video is a little bit of bee pal. So this is my Fright Bee Pal. It's actually a wig spray. And I wanted to just spray this one first because it turns out that this wig spray if you, if you know about my spirits that I live with, um, one of my spirits who I particularly adore, uh, he really, really loves the smell of this. I sprayed it in my hair um, 
about a couple of weeks ago and for days after that the smell kept just drifting back to me I knew it wasn't on me I'd washed my hair the smell just kept coming back and um, spirits are able to do this if there is a smell that is airborne they can kind of take it in and they can reproduce it and it can kind of become the scent that lets you know that they're around so um so sometimes he lets me know that he's around by making this scent in the air or I'm never quite sure like whether he's saying hi I'm here or whether he's saying please use that perfume I like it so give it a bit of a spray wipe my wrist through it <laughs> it really is beautiful it's lovely I think it's the pomegranate and also the whiskey that he likes um so we've got that one floating around to make him happy so anyway now that I have waffled at you unnecessarily for about nine minutes onwards to the raven <laughs> love book sounds The Raven. <laughs> Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow, from my book's surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, nameless here for evermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late night visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, this is it and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer, Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there, wondering, fearing, Doubting, dreaming dreams, no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, nor a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door. Perched upon a bust of pallas just above my chamber door, perched and sat and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, 
Art sure no craven, ghastly grim, an ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what the lordly name is on the night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marvelled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevance he bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters is only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master, whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster, till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. But the raven, still beguiling all my fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird, and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking, fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt and ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah. Nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by these angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, a quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if, within the distant Aden, it still clasp a sainted maiden, whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign in parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked, upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest and at the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door. 
and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming and the lamplight o'er him throws his shadow on the floor and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Wow, that wasn't actually as long to read as I thought it was going to be. Ah, oh, good old Edgar Allan. <laughs> Are you asleep yet? Wow, this is suddenly 21 minutes long, so maybe you are. But um, I suppose in that case, I'd better shut up before I make any noises that rudely startle you because there's nothing worse than being in the middle of an ASMR video and nearly asleep and then suddenly from one side is a strange bang or scratching sound which has happened to me many times and because my bed is up a ladder there is a particular ASMR I love I think it's GB's um, top 10 ASMR triggers there is a point in this video where there is a specific scrabbling noise from just to the right of you because it's binaural and uh, it sounds exactly like somebody scrambling up my ladder to get me. So uh, I will try to shut up promptly before doing anything like that to you. But uh, yes, I don't know whether... Oh, that actually makes quite a creepy sound. But I have a new dress and I was wondering if it made nice noises. <laughs> I think fabric sounds are kind of lovely in ASMR, um, admittedly far more so if it's binaural because it, it feels and it sounds like somebody tucking you in and <laughs> I think that's lovely. I'll give you one more little pumpkin rattle and I will shut up. However, if there are other things that you would like me to read, because I do believe this one was requested quite some time ago and I'd forgotten about it until I changed the colour of my foliage and was thinking, now is the time to make Halloween content. I should read The Raven. This is the thing to do. Um, but if there are other things you would like me to read, tell me so. Um, I'm already thinking I might read The Telltale Heart at some point because it's such a fun story and it's kind of long but not exhaustingly long so um, possibly The Telltale Heart <laughs> because I, I do love a crazy character. I do love a crazy character to read. <laughs> Get to do some silly voices, always quite fun not super relaxing or ASMR-like when there are silly voices involved, but uh, the Telltale Heart may be next. But uh, anyway, this has been a nice relaxing reading for me. Um, I was feeling a bit anxious earlier, but plugging yourself in to this and having ASMR sounds all around you um, and having a nice read of some Edgar Allen is very relaxing. So maybe I will get the Telltale Heart done before Halloween. Maybe I won't, but uh, I'm thinking I will probably be Halloween colours for, uh, for quite some time. But anyway, night night, and I will shut up and leave you at that. Over and out. Bye bye. <laughs>